Uh, hello everyone. Today's experiment named is Elastic Kinetic Energy. In this experiment, we will use springs. Stretch or compress the spring can um, do work. And that work can turn into kinetic energy at a later time. So in this experiment, we will investigate how we can store a kinetic energy with using this spring. We will also investigate the elastic constant. Uh, if I am using that spring in a vertical position, so if I hang a mass here, let's say it's a, as M, and uh, that will uh, create a length difference on that spring. Let's say that this with adding this mass, this spring stretch as amount of distance, let's call it uh, x. So I can say that also gravitational force with a mass. So uh, Hooke's law says that if I apply a force on a spring, uh, the, its length can be changed with, with a linear relationship with a constant, which we call it that already elastic constant. Uh, and because of this is spring force, which means uh, if I apply a force, for example, in that direction, spring force will be on the upward direction because that is the uh, reaction that spring uh, gives us. So I can say minus sign here uh, because if I uh, increase the distance in the plus x direction, the spring will act to the negative direction, minus direction. And in the experiment, we will investigate firstly the constant key in part A. Uh, we will investigate the spring's constant that the sp from the spring that we are using. Uh, and in part B, we will investigate the relationship between elastic potential energy that the spring has and uh, the kinetic energy that can uh, that the spring can accelerate an object. So we will we can say the work done by the spring as one over two k x square, where x is the distance that we stretched or compressed to the spring, and this is the amount of work that we are doing. Also, we can say that this is the uh, kinetic energy that a spring can accelerate an object. Let's call it O spring. We can convert that energy to uh, kinetic energy of a glider that we can call it 1 over 2 m uh, velocity square. Let's call it kinetic energy of a glider that we will use in the experiment. I'll introduce the experimental setup for part A. To do that, we will uh, use a spring with a low elastic constant, let's call it K, and supported from one edge. And uh, let's call that this is a table. And we will add some masses from with using mass hangers. We will add masses here. And during the experiment, we will see that as I increase the amount of mass I add here with the uh, gravitational acceleration, I will create a uh, gravitational force that will move that um, spring in amounts of distance. So I can call it x, for example. Mm, during the experiment, the data I will collect will be uh, mass in terms of uh, kilograms. And firstly, I will convert that mass, a gravitational, which is in units of Newton, and the formula 
can be said as F gravitational is equals M mass that uh, gravitational acceleration. After that, during the experiment, I will mm, measure the distance change. Let's call it x in meters. And with changing that masses, and, and I will first give that table in grams, then I will convert it to Newton. Uh, the masses I will use during the experiment will be 5 grams, 10 grams, mm. and going like that. Uh, I will calculate that part and I will measure that column. After that, I will, uh, to understand the spin constant, I will use the data I collect during the experiment and I will use Hooke's law, which is e -EQ, F equals minus plus or so the data I will collect will be in the axis of distance and the force, spring force. So uh, the slope of this graph which is tangent alpha, you can say, is mm, force divided by distance. So that is equal to spin constant. Let's move on to part A to see the experiment. The experimental setup will be like that. Uh, this is an air truck with a glider on it. And uh, here you can see a mass hanger that is originally 5 grams, and uh, here there are additional masses, we will add that system, and we have a spring which is having a low spring constant, so because of the friction on that system, uh, this glider is not moving, even I can add masses here, so during the experiment to reduce the friction on that surface, I will use an air supply, during the experiment in part A, what I will do is that I will add masses on that mass hanger and I will measure the distance uh, change here. So to start, firstly I am arranging the position of the spring. The spring will be its unstretched position. So I am uh, putting a mark here. This is my reference point. Now I am turning on the apply. And starting to add masses. Secondly, I will add another mass here. and measure the distance traveled again. Now the uh, amount of grams will be 20 grams. And I note the distance. Now the amount of grams will be 25 that and lastly the amount of grams will be 30 distance traveled can be noted at that point after that we will uh, draw a graph of that moment uh, in x-axis that will be distance traveled and the, in the y-axis that will be the gravitational force 
uh, caused by these masses. Now I will introduce the experimental setup for part B, which we will investigate the uh, spring's potential energy that can accelerate an object which has a kinetic energy. So this will be uh, the kinetic energy and the mass of a glider on the system and this we will use spring's energy. We find the experimental answer for k um, in the part A, so we will use the uh, slope of the graph that we got from the experiment and uh, now we will change to this, we will stretch a spring amounts of distance let's call it x meters and we will do that uh, with using these data 5 centimeters 8 centimeters and when we uh, stretch that spring and we let the spring that can accelerate an object, we will uh, try to measure the velocity of the uh, glider. So what we can measure is we can, we can measure the uh, seconds when the flag enters the uh, photogate timer. So we will have a photogate timer here which will start to count the time when the uh, first edge of the flag enters here and that will count until the last edge of the flag uh, passes through that sensor. So we will get the amount of time and we know that distance as L so we can uh, calculate the velocity of the glider with dividing L um, let's call it with L per uh, time in seconds. So, if I count the time, I will do that experiment three times, uh, and after that, I will calculate average time average during that moment. Then I will calculate velocity of the glider and the mass of glide uh, two uh, 210 grams so after that I can calculate kinetic energy of the glider so I can calculate glider's kinetic energy then I can calculate spring's uh, energy that I will use the uh, K from part A so after the experiment and after the calculations, I can uh, compare the kinetic energy and potential energy of the spring. Uh, of course, there will be no equivalence um, uh, between them. So what we can investigate is the reasons of that, because some of them can be that our uh, surface is not frictionless. We also have an amount of friction, and some of them can be because of our experimental uh, equipments or configuration of the experiment that can be you can also think about the uh, other reasons in the second part of the experiment again my the spring is in unstretched position so i noted the reference point here from the edge of the glider what i will do during the experiment is that i will unstretch the street as the amount of distance I mentioned here. So after that, for example, I mm, change the distance like that. Then when I uh, release my hand from the grider and the, the system will be frictionless, uh, so this glider will start to move. Then that sensor, a photogate timer, will count that amount of time that the flag uh, go through that uh, part of that um, equipment. Before starting, I placed that uh, glider just in front of the sensor, not in uh, touch with the sensor. 
So I'm resetting the time at zero. And after I open the air supply, okay. Now I change the distance here. And I will note that time, I think, on that. Secondly, the distance will be that. Again, I will note the time, writing here. Third distance will be that. And I let the counter count the time. The port measurement will be from here. Again, I noted the count of time. <coughs> And lastly, the stretch will be that amount. And I will note the time counted. <laughs>